What's going on everybody? Cam Sweet here from the Garage Connection coming to you with another mini excavator video here. This one's going to be all about the engine charging system, okay? We're going to talk about how the alternator works, how to test it, and uh, and how to troubleshoot it and figure out if yours is working correctly. So stay tuned. All right, so the quick little backstory here is I put these two cooling fans in in one of my last videos. And I got a comment from a gentleman. He said, hey, how do you know that the cooling fans are not gonna drain down the house battery inside the machine? Do you think the engine has enough power to charge the batteries back up to keep up with the cooling fans? So I had a cool video planned out where I was gonna put a multimeter on battery connections and actually measure the amount of current draw from the fans and then fire the engine up and measure the amount of charge and amperage that's going into the battery to see if the regulator and the alternator was capable of keeping up with the fans. Unfortunately, during the process of doing that, I discovered that my machine isn't charging at all, actually. Um, so now I've, I've dove into the, the engine electrical, and I thought I would share some of that with you. Okay, for the purposes of this video, I've pulled off the, uh, the fan housing here and the pole start housing, um, just to show you a little bit more in depth of what we're actually talking about. So right here, we have the flywheel. Obviously there is the starter and we have all of our electrical connections over here. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is when the engine's actually running, okay? Because once it's started, the engine through the flywheel and the coil is generating its own power enough to fire the spark plug. Now where all that is actually happening is right here, okay? This is the coil that's behind the blower housing. So up here we have our spark plug wire, okay? And then the coil, is going to have a mag or electrical uh, charge induced into it by the movement of our engine flywheel past the windings in here, okay? Now on this end, we have an electrical connection. This is what's used to shut the engine off. So when you turn the key off, it actually grounds this and it makes the field collapse inside the coil so the spark plug can no longer fire. Now these engines also have a rather interesting system in them to help protect the engine. And that's going to involve this yellow wire right here and this little silver box, okay? This is the oil pressure shutdown. So we have a yellow wire going into the engine block right back here, and it's going to connect into this little silver box. Now, if at any point in time the oil level drops and the engine thinks it's out of oil, it actually grounds this black wire and this black wire is also connected to the output of the coil. So if at any time this wire gets grounded, the coil's field collapses and it can no longer fire the spark plug. This is why this wire that goes to the coil is actually one of three. We have three different ends right here. This is coming from your key switch. This is coming from your oil level system. And there is a third connection that's not used. Okay, so we're going to talk about the charging system on this engine. So this engine right here, this being a 13 and a half horsepower Briggs and Stratton, has a multitude of different alternators that can be put underneath this flywheel, okay? There's DC only ones, there's uh, DC AC ones, and then there's AC only. The one that we have on our little mini excavators is a 10 amp AC mm -hmm. alternator, okay? Now we know that because, and I'm gonna put this up over uh, the video right now, because there's a chart available on Briggs & Stratton's website that goes over all the different wiring colors, the connector colors, and how to identify what type of alternator you have, all right? So I use that chart, as you can see, and it comes down to a 10 amp AC alternator, all right? So now to test this alternator, what we have to do is we got to establish a couple things. Number one, we got to establish what we're testing for, and number two, we have to establish the engine speed, okay? So what we're gonna be testing for is AC voltage, and we're gonna be testing for that voltage at the output of the alternator, okay? What I've done here is I have my little spike probes plugged into the two wires coming out of the alternator. I've ran those to just a normal multimeter here, and we're gonna go ahead and set that for voltage AC when we're ready to test. The only other thing we gotta figure out is what our engine speed is. Now the Briggs and Stratton manuals say that all uh, alternator checks shall be done at 3600 RPM, okay? My hearing's not that good, I cannot tell you how fast the engine's going, but 
because I have a problem with Amazon and I buy things, I picked up, as I drop it, this little digital tachometer, okay? This thing is going to shoot a laser and it's going to pick up the RPM of the engine. What I've done here prior to this video, I put a little reflective tape that it comes with so it can measure the engine speed. So when the laser returns to sender here, it figures out how much our engine speed is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the engine on, I'm gonna set it to the correct RPM, and then we are gonna take a voltage AC reading at the output of the alternator. Now Briggs and Stratton's manual states that at 3600 RPM, this should be outputting 20 volts AC. So we're gonna verify that right now. Okay, so as you can see, once we ran that test, we confirmed that our alternator is not putting out nearly enough voltage to charge our system. Initially, I had thought that it was the regulator rectifier up here that was actually bad, but instead it is in fact our alternator. So we're gonna go ahead and pull off this flywheel and we're gonna order a replacement alternator for the engine and see if we can get the charging system back in good order. Right, so what I've done here, I pulled off the, uh, the flywheel and I took a look at this. This is our alternator sitting in here, okay? So the flywheel is spinning around the outside of this and it's making the power. So what I did is I took my meter and I went across these two pins testing for resistance and I found that that was open. I had a very, very sporadic connection. If I wiggled the hell out of it, it would, it would show just for a second and then it would go open again. So I came in here and I inspected if I don't know if you can see it. Let me zoom in here. So on this alternator, you can see that we have a solder connection up here and we have another one on the other side here. I took a real good look at these two solder connections and what I discovered is this top one was very weak. It actually crumbled apart in my hands. So I have run a soldering iron into this and re-soldered this connection and took a good look at that one. And I think I have gotten the alternator to have continuity. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna go back to our plug and I'm gonna take my meter, I'm gonna put it on resistance again. And we're gonna do a, we're gonna do a check here to make sure we're good. Yep. And then I'm going to go across these two pins. And it looks like we have good continuity. So now instead of ordering a new alternator, I can go ahead and reinstall the flywheel, torque everything back to specifications, and that should liven up my charging system. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna run the same test that I ran earlier, checking for volts AC. And uh, this time I've, I've repaired the alternator, so we're gonna see what we get now. So I'm gonna set the speed and then we're gonna go from there. Now it is worth pointing out, if the alternator was putting out 20 volts AC like it was supposed to, and the battery was still not charging, then I would look at that regulator rectifier and I would test if that was putting out voltage appropriately or if it wasn't. Hope this quick little video helps you out one day in, in diagnosing your charging system on your Chinese mini excavator. 
For now, that's gonna do it. I'm Cam Sweet from The Garage Connection, and I got more work to do on this project.